Hello and welcome to the Go Engineer video series. This is Bruce Kane, technical support engineer here at Go Engineer. And today we're going to do a quick example of how to use a library feature to create a mortise and tenon feature used in woodworking. So to start off, I have a what I call a sample leg. It's basically just a block extrusion. You can see it just boss extrude four inches square by eight inches long. First thing you need to do to create a library feature is to actually create the feature first at least one time. On this face of this part we are going to create a sketch that is going to be used to create our cut for the mortise and tenon feature and then from, from that cut I'm going to use the same edges to create the extrusion to create the tenon piece. So to first create the mortise and tenon feature we have to create the mortise which is the cut or the hole in the one part to receive the tenon which is the plug I guess for lack of a better term in to use with the mortise so let's create a sketch on this plane so let's just draw a simple rectangle and you notice our little snap points that pop in there by default go ahead and do not use those or if you don't know for sure where it's going to be lined up, let's not use them to line up anything. So go ahead and throw a sketch on there and then let's use some dimensions to locate it. First thing you want to do is locate the sketch. So in this case I would suggest coming down from an edge and also over from an edge. Now in this particular point you can either come over to an edge itself or the center of the tenon. So uh, for this example, I'm going to go center the mortise. That just seems to me to be more logical. You can change that if you want. I'm going to say 1.5. Now the size of the mortise. I'm just going to give it a couple dimensions here. I'm going to say it's half inch by you know, four inches long. If you want to change that, you can. The main point is get some dimensions on here. Okay, once we have a fully defined sketch, everything's black, we'll use that sketch to create a cut. And I'm guessing on this one, I'm going to say three quarters of an inch deep is how deep you're going to want for the cut. You can change that at any time you want. Go ahead and put a cut in. Okay, so now we have a cut in our part. I'm going to select this back edge, which is the depth of the cut, and start a new sketch. Okay, so with that face selected, I'm going to start a new sketch and I'm going to convert entities with that face selected. What that did was grab all the edges of that face. I'm going to use this sketch to now create the tenon. Okay, so I'll do an extrude boss using that sketch and I'm going to come out double the depth. Goes three quarters in each part so I'm going to say it's an inch and a half long. Okay, now the key thing here is turn off the merge results we want this tenon to be a separate solid. Okay, so it's extruding out of the part. Go ahead and hit the green check mark. What that does is we now have two solid bodies, our original table leg and our boss extrude. Okay. Now before we go any further, let's actually go in and name some stuff. So let's come in here and edit this sketch for our cut. When we do a dimension, you can rename it in this box here. So this dimension here is our, we'll say, vertical location or horizontal location. Okay, so we'll say side location. Okay, hit the green check mark. Let's do the same thing for this one. Double click, click up in here, we'll say vertical location. Okay, hit the green check mark. So that's our location coming in from the side and down from the top. We can do the same thing here. We'll say 10 in height. Hit the green check mark. And down here, we'll do the same thing 10 in width. Okay. Get that out of the way. Okay, so we've renamed our dimensions there. Let's go ahead and hit the green check mark. Now our boss extrude, we can come in there and actually rename some dimensions there too. We'll say that one is tenon length. 
It's always a good idea to rename your dimensions just to be when you do use them. And when we do use them, we will show you where that comes in handy. Okay, so we now have a cut extrude, basically cutting the mortise. And in fact, let's rename that. Call this the mortise. And our boss extrude is now the tenon. Okay, so we have our mortise and tenon. Let's go ahead and make a library feature of that part. So if we click on our design library. We click add to library. Okay, it pulls us into the add to library feature and asks us what items we want to add to the library feature. This is going to be the feature that creates the whole mortise and tenon feature. So we're going to add in our mortise feature and our tenon feature. Okay, it's by default goes into the design library. You can expand this out, create your own little directory to put them in. For now, we're just going to leave them at the top level. If you want to put in a description later, you can. Let's go ahead and change the name of this to Mortis and Tenon Feature. Seems like a good name for it. And what that does, as soon as we hit OK, we're going to watch the part name up here. We'll go ahead and hit OK. And it closes everything out. Still has the same part here. But you'll notice our little mortise and tenon features now have an L next to them, which means it's a library feature. Okay. And you'll notice in our design library, we now have our mortise and tenon feature. So once we have that there, let's go ahead and open it. Now it looks like the same parts opened up again, but you'll notice our name up here is now the mortise and tenon feature dot SLD LFP. That's a library feature part. Okay. It opens up in the properties tab. We're going to change over to the feature manager tab. And what that does is it adds these two folders up at the top here, references and dimensions. This is what controls how you control your feature when you're bringing it in. Okay. Underneath the dimensions folder, you have two subfolders called locating dimensions and internal dimensions. Our locating dimensions are what are going to locate the mortise and tenon feature. So our vertical location, right mouse click and drag it in, and side location, right mouse click and drag to locating dimensions. Just a simple left mouse click, drag and drop. Okay. The internal dimensions are what are controlled internally and don't get changed. The rest of them, if you leave them up here, they are able to be changed by the user. So our D1 Let's change that. We'll call that tenon depth. We forgot to change that one. Okay, and the D1 here. That one is not getting used. That is actually our converted entities from the back of the tenon extrude cut. So let's just go and change, move that into internal dimension since it's one that's not going to get changed. So underneath our locating dimensions is our location down from the vertical, our location in from the side, and then we will also have the tenon depth, the width, the height, and the length. Okay, so let's go ahead and save that, and let's close it. Okay, now let's go ahead and start a new file. So we have a new table leg. So we'll start a new file. And it's going to be an inch part. Okay, I'm going to come in on the top plane, create a quick sketch of a table leg. Okay, it's going to be this one's going to be a rectangle leg. Don't know why. Just want to try a rectangle. Let's throw some dimensions on here. It's going to be five wide by three. Don't even know if this would be actual proper table leg, but we're just going to go with it and see what happens. Okay, so we'll extrude that out. Let's go 10 inches the other direction just for fun. Okay, so we basically have a solid here. Okay, so our, now to get our mortise and tenon put in there underneath our design library, it's right here. We just click on it, hold it, and drag it in and place it on the plane or the face that we want this feature 
to be applied to. So let's say that plane. And then what happens is you get this little window here that always seems to drop right over the top of everything. So, but what it does, it tells you, okay, I'm asking for this edge on our part. Okay, this was our original part view as we created the mortise and tenon feature, and we use these features to locate stuff. So it's asking for its first edge is, and it shows you, it highlights what edge it wants you to select. So we'll select the corresponding edge on our part now. And now it's also saying, okay, next one is this vertical edge here. So let's go and select the same vertical edge on this one. And it now locates it. Now we can change these locating values. Okay, so our vertical location, I'm not sure where it comes up with these numbers. Our original one was a half inch, I believe. But we're going to change it to oh, 750. And the side location, this one's fairly close to the edge, so we're just going to say 1.5. Now your size dimensions are buried underneath here, so let's go ahead and open them up. Our tenant depth, we're going to leave that the same. If we want to override them, we can, so let's go ahead and override them. We'll leave our depth and length, or the size of the tenant itself, keep them the same. And let's go, let's leave a half inch width, but we'll change the height to three and a half. Okay, so you notice it changed the size there. And go ahead and hit the green check mark, and we now have our original part and our tenon is now part of the leg. Okay. That in a nutshell is how to create a library feature for a mortise and tenon feature. Once again, this is Bruce Kane at Go Engineer. Hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you.